Let's bring in Melanie Collette and Ford O'Connell, Ford uh, businessman, lawyer, GOP strategist, and host of Money Talk with Melanie and Project 21 member Melanie Collette. Um, and, and Melanie, I wanted to ask you about this. It seems like um, uh, Nancy Pelosi and company overplayed their hand with this infrastructure bill. They thought they could use that as leverage to get people to vote for their bill back better. And they finally got the infrastructure thing through with the vote of Republicans pushing it over the top rather than Democrats. They wouldn't have had enough otherwise. Um, so now they want their victory lap. I don't know why they're taking a, a, a victory lap. And by the way, uh, no Republicans better not show their faces <laughs> aligning themselves with Democrats for this ridiculously expensive bill. They better not show their faces. It's not going to be a positive thing for those Republicans. There's an old saying, a hard head gets a soft behind. And I think Democrats <laughs> need to remember that. The American public keeps, keeps telling them in poll after poll that we don't want all of this big spending, that we don't like their agenda, that we don't love what the Biden administration is doing, and they're, they're hard-headed. And they just keep doing it, and they're trying to do it again with yet another big spending bill. It's a bad idea, and Republicans that, that signed this bill should be primary. Yeah, uh, Ford, um, let's take a look at this, though. I also want you to respond to this, this recent Rasmussen poll asking Americans if President Biden is doing enough uh, to fix the supply chain issues in the country. We mentioned that the mayor there of Long Beach, California, is expected to be there today. 59% of folks said no, 14% uh, unsure, and 27% said uh, yes, he is doing enough. Um, and then we had earlier, I think it was over the weekend, that someone from the Biden administration was asked about, you know, what is the administration doing in terms of inflation? And they said, and I think, um, you know, we were listening to part of what Jen Psaki had to say earlier today, they keep pivoting back to COVID. You know, COVID, and if everyone gets um, vaccinated, specifically vaccinating kids. All those ships are going to go yeah, away? it's somehow going to help with the supply chain issue and with inflation. Well, look, there's no question that the supply chain issue, the shortages, the gas prices have people really mad at the Democratic Party. That said, inflation is the single biggest obstacle the Democrats face heading into the 2022 midterms. Even further, if you look at that Washington Post poll on the generic congressional ballot, Republicans are favored by 10. It's the highest differential in the 40 years of polling. I will tell you right now, Democrats think that the way to cure inflation is to spend trillions more while trying to eliminate fossil fuels, they're going to wind up getting crushed in the 2022 midterms because after nine months, Americans have woken up to how bad uh, Biden's policies are for them. Um, let's look at some uh, numbers from Rasmussen, how Americans are concerned about the supply chain, how it could lead to food shortages. 49% saying they're very concerned. 33 said somewhat concerned. 14% not very concerned. 3% not concerned at all. Uh, we've seen inflation. We've got that going on. So with all these things going wrong, explain to me, Ford, why so many Republicans stepped in line. Now, I'm going to leave out the Tip O'Neill thing where all politics are local, since everyone in the conservative side, and most of these districts come from conservative districts, okay? Explain to me why they went ahead and voted for this anyway. Because they were stupid, and I'll be totally honest with you. When it comes to the House members, they were in districts with large trade unions, and they got paid off in the bill to go through their districts. Okay. As for the senators, I don't know who was telling them, whether it was Mitch McConnell or someone else, if you vote for this, we'll stave off the bad deal. All these bills are terrible for America. And if they get this 2 to $4 trillion social infrastructure bill, this new one that they're talking about, with Build Back Better, essentially we will have spent more than $10 trillion on our COVID response. And I promise you, that's going to jack up inflation even more, which is at the highest in 31 years. Yeah. Uh, can we go back to some of these polls, just the in general, uh, talking about President Biden, where he just continues to go down in almost every single category, uh, whether it be from Republicans or Democrats. Uh, but then at the same time, you have uh, President Biden and his staff leaking out this information that they're oh so unhappy with the vice president and her polling numbers, which continue to drop and, and are low as well. Uh, so some of your thoughts on 
this back and forth between the president and the vice president and what may be going on behind the scenes there. Melanie? Why is anyone surprised that there's a rift between Kamala Harris and the Biden administration or President Biden? Did anyone see when they primaried each other? Did anyone see Kamala Harris outright call him a racist? And now you guys are supposed to be friends. Look at all the polling numbers. She was she she got out of the primary before Marianne Williamson, bless mm -hmm. her heart. And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, Kamala That's Harris true. was never a very likable person to begin with, and now she's trying to distance herself from the Biden administration. But she's not doing. A, you would think that. In distancing herself, she would try to do a better job at the things that she's been assigned. Hello, go to the border, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and and she's not doing any of that. But uh, nobody should be surprised that these people, that they had a fake alliance going on. You call me a racist, we're going to have a big problem.